Heavenly Father, we pray and intercede for our co-workers and friends and family and relatives and our neighbors and, uh, that need you, who need a relationship with you. And so we come collectively together praying for those lives, praying for unsaved, backslidden, unsure, unchurched people. Draw them, almighty God. Open their eyes to the need for you. Open their eyes to their need for the church, the family of God. And pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just draw them to yourself in Jesus' name. As we come together, we also pray, as we bring the word, that you would anoint us to be your mouthpiece, Father. Please let us be a channel, a conduit for your truth. Let hearts be open and receptive, open eyes to see the truth of your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, you can be seated. Last week, uh, I talked to you about the importance of raising children to hear and follow God's voice. Today is part two. Somebody say part two. This is part two. I guess I want to modify the title a little bit and say the importance of raising adults and children to hear and follow the voice of God. Thank you. I think there was one applause somewhere. I don't know where it came from, but wherever you are, it's too late. It's too late. Don't try now. Y'all are a little slow. Come on, y'all. This is a slow. This is, y'all used to be the really top notch on top of a crowd. That if I felt I didn't preach well at, at the early service or the late service, I knew that the 10 o'clock crowd would be with me all the time. I used to feel that way. I don't know who's going to be the service now that's really going to be with me, but y'all are waning on the scale of me celebrating you. This is uh, last week. Let me just just quickly review that what we talked about. We talked about Samuel, who who was a man of God. He became a a very significant person in the history of Israel and the and the family of God. He was God's mouthpiece. He was a prophet, priest, judge. In fact, he appointed and anointed the first two kings of Israel. He became God's mouthpiece. He got there because of the way his parents raised him. And what I tried to talk about last week was how important it is for parents and grandparents to participate in the very important task of raising your children to follow the voice of God. Amen. That's a very important uh, posture role. And as a matter of fact, Hannah, his mama, Samuel's mama, prayed for the child before she even conceived the child. Before she even got pregnant, she was praying for her child. And I want to say to all of the mamas who want to be mamas, who might be mamas, who have a future to be a mama, pray for your child even now, even before you have children. And she prayed because she was married to a man who had two wives back in that day. And one of the, the other wife had children, but Hannah didn't have no children. So she prayed that God would give her a male child. And she said this to God, that if God gave her a son, that she would dedicate and commit that child to God. I want you to pray that for your, your children that are both the children that you have and the children that you're about to have. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, pray for the future of your children that you're going to have. And so Samuel became a mighty man of God. He, he walked in the ways of God. He was a significant person. And there's some elements that his parents put in place that ass, uh, assisted with him being like that. The family worshiped together. When the child was young, uh, they worshiped together as a family. When he was a child, they regularly, the family regularly worshiped together. It's important, I believe, for families to worship together. Amen. They not only uh, worshiped together and prayed together, um, in, in chapter 1, verse 25, they bought the baby when the baby came finally, when Samuel came, they bought the child, the baby to the priest and dedicated the child to God. 
we do that every third Sunday here at our church. Families bring their children, and I think it's important that you dedicate your child to God. Don't make the mistake of waiting till your child is grown, halfway grown, to be trying to get them right with God. That's a problem that a lot of communities have, a lot of families have. They wait, they wait too late to try to dedicate their children to God. And I want to suggest to you that you raise your children before the Lord in the house of God, has a family that you pray for your children. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, in chapter 2 of 1 Samuel, Hannah prayed for her child. And I want to encourage parents and grandparents to be praying for your children and your grandchildren. Uh, intercede for them. I, I shared today and I want to continue to share how uh, my wife has been, in, she intercedes for my kids and her, her, her focus on praying now is for their spouses. Yeah, pray because... She, See, some of y'all don't think that's important. That's okay. It's important that you pray that God bring the right spouse into the doorway of your, of your child. You can... Um, I don't need to tell y'all you can marry the wrong person and it bring hell in your life. I, I know y'all want to say amen, but y'all scared. I know y'all scared. So my wife has made it a, a point for years to pray for our children's spouses, not just for the children, but pray for their spouses. So that's important. That's, I believe it's an important thing. And I also talked to you last week about the fact that in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 11, put that on the screen for just a second. There it is. Verse 11, it says, Then Elkanah, that's the father, went to his house at Ramah, and then it says this, but the child ministered to the Lord. Somebody say, but the child ministered to the Lord. <laughs> verse 11, verse 11, but the child ministered to the Lord. That word minister means serve. We, we have an opportunity to minister to God, and we do that by serving God. Your child, not just adults can minister to God, but children can minister to the Lord by serving him. I think it's important that you help your children find a place to minister to God in the house of God. Some of you have never ministered to God. You want to be ministered to, but you have never ministered to. You want God to minister to you. You want him to make his path for you plain. You want him to open up doors. You want him to work miracles for you. You want God to answer your prayer. You want God to make you rich and prosper you. And, and you want God to do great things. But what are you doing for the Lord? What are you doing for God? Your service to God is an expression of your gratitude for what he has done for you. So it says in verse 11 that the, the, the child ministered to God. I'm, I'm impressed by the fact it says the child ministered to God. I, my mother brought me to church as a small kid. She brought me to the First Baptist Church of Glenarden when I was a young man. And, and I, I, re, I remember, uh, I don't remember this, but my mother tells me, I said, we ain't going in that raggedy building. This was the old, old, old building. I don't remember saying that, but that's what she said. But I found my destiny in that church. I found my future. I found a walk with God in that church. I it helped shape my life. When you don't go to church, and I know I'm pre preaching to the choir because at least y'all here, but some of y'all don't go regularly. Look at your neighbor. Somebody on your road, somebody in your section don't go to church regularly. Go ahead, look around, see if you can figure out who it is. It's important that you raise your children and your grandchildren. Listen, grandparents, if your children don't go to church, go get your grandkids and bring them to church. That's an important deal, that they can have an opportunity to be in the house of God, in the face of God, and get the word of God to shape their life. Not only in verse 11 does it say, chapter 2, verse 11, what they did. In chapter 2, that the child ministered to the Lord. But in verse 18, look at verse 18. It says, Samuel ministered before the Lord. He, went, he ministered to the Lord, then he ministered before the Lord, even as a child, it says in verse 18. Even as a child. Our children have an opportunity to make an impression and to do something in the face of God. 
And so uh, I, I want to encourage you. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the pastor's trying to encourage you. <laughs> I'm trying to encourage you to do that. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, Hannah prayed for her son. In uh, verse 18, verse 11, here we have these two verses where the child ministered to the Lord. But then when we get to chapter 3, go to chapter 3. Go, look, y'all got your Bibles open? I hope y'all got your Bibles open. In chapter 3, verse 1, it says, now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord. I want you to see a path here, a, a, a pattern here of, of, of how it's mentioned multiple times that the child, the child, and now it says the boy ministered to God. It's a, it's a journey. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It is, it is the development of a child growing up in the house of the Lord around the presence of God. And it says, and I love this because as a child, you're an infant, but when you become a boy, he's an adolescent. That's what the word boy means, an adolescent. It means a teenager. Y'all know teenagers can be tough to get to church. And I told y'all last week, I'm going to tell them again, if the child is in your house living under your roof, You paying the bills, you putting the food on the table, they, they don't have an option. Kind of quiet over here in this section right here. I don't know why, but this section's kind of quiet. They ain't saying nothing, looking at me like I'm preaching in a foreign language. I'm talking to y'all. This used to be the youth section over here. I think a spirit must have invaded the whole section. It's important, it's significant. And I, I want to encourage us today, uh, the whole point of this message today is to try to bring you to a place where you under, children learn how God operates and they learn the ways of God and the voice of God and they live in the pattern that God has for them. And so Samuel even has a boy, an adolescent, has a teenager grew in the path of his walk with God. Now, I know some of y'all might say, well, my parents didn't bring me to church and church is new to me or I, I don't know much about church. It's okay. It's never too late to start. Amen. You know what I love about the Lord? I'm grateful that we serve a God that will give you another chance. You, you, you may have missed it growing up. Your parents may not have taken you to church or maybe they didn't live the right kind of life before you. It's okay. You old enough to make a decision now on your own. But you can make the choice and the decision. Amen. Preach on, Pastor. I'm doing the best that I can. In Samuel's teenage years, something unusual happened. And I want to take the last nine minutes that I have, or longer, <laughs> and talk. And if you just get this one thing out of this message today, I would have accomplished what it is I want to accomplish. I hope you get all the other things I've just said, but I want to focus in on this one point, this one thought that I want you to get and understand. Because in chapter 3 of 2 Samuel, something unusual happened. Let me read it to you. I want to start at verse number 2 of chapter 3, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 2. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down. Eli was the priest, by the way, in his place. He was lying down in his place. And when his eyes had begin, begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was laying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. Stick a pin right there. Can I pause for a second to talk about that? God can call a youth. I was licensed at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden to preach when I was 15 years of age. And the other pastors around the community criticized Pastor Johnson for licensing me at 15. So they used to say, he down there licensing babies. So when they, when they finished talking about him licensing me, then they called me to come and preach to the youth service at their church. Yeah. 
And God called him. He says right here, I love this right here, that the voice of the Lord spoke to him. He called Samuel. Y'all see that verse number five? So that the Lord, verse four, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. And he said, I did not call, lie down again. And he went and laid out. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And so he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am for you did not, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he calls you that he, you must say, speak Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel answered, speak for your servant hears. Now, at first he didn't recognize the voice of God. He thought the priest was calling him. He heard something, but he didn't know what it was. And so he Went to, he had gone to uh, Eli multiple times and finally when Eli said the next time you hear that voice say speak for the, your, the, your servants listening and that's when I want to get all of you to be at a place that when God speaks to you that you recognize that God's talking to you. That you recognize the voice of God. Let me tell you something here. The most important thing you're going to need to know is when God is talking to you. Because God will order your steps. By the way, if there's any questions in anybody's mind, God is still talking. God is still communicating. God is still speaking. If you don't hear God talking, it's not because he's not talking to you. It's that you haven't yet learned how to hear God speaking to you. He's speaking, he's communicating, he's trying to get you in his perfect will, he's trying to get you in the path of the life he wants you to live, he's trying to get you in the right place and you just gotta open your ears and hear God talking to you. So the question is, how do you know when God's talking to you? I don't have time to talk about all of the different ways God communicates. You can go to the book, so I did a series on how to hear the voice of God, 10 different ways God can speak to you. Stop by, or you can go on YouTube, uh, the Inside First Baptist Church, Inside FBCG, and find the messages where I talked about the 10 different ways God speaks to you, because he is still talking. Tell your neighbor, he's still talking. I love hearing God speak to me and order my steps and tell me my path and tell me what to do and tell me what to say and tell me where to go and tell me how to walk and tell me how to respond. I love hearing the voice of God. There's nothing like knowing that God is talking to you and speaking to you because he's showing you he's alive and he's well and he's real and that he loves you and that he cares about you and that he has a future and a destiny for you. But the question is, how do you know when it's God? Because by the way, every voice you hear is not the Lord's voice. Some of the stuff you hear came from the devil. Some of the stuff you hear came because you ate too much food before you went to bed last night. The devil wants to trick you and fool you. But here's what I learned about God. I got this one point I want to make. It's, it's 1056. I promise I'll be finished when I get done. So it's 1056 right now. I want you to get this point right here, that this point here is so clear to me that I, I, I felt from the Lord to just drive this one point home to you. And here's what it is, that when God speaks to you, he has no problems repeating himself. Did y'all notice that the claps are going lower and lower and lower? God doesn't have a problem repeating himself. Matter of fact, he does it multiple times. As a matter of fact, you can read in the scriptures, go to the Bible and see verses repeated over and over again. Matter of fact, you can go to the Bible and see chapters repeated, entire chapters repeated again. God does not have a problem repeating himself. And I want to say to you, don't make a decision when you hear something one time and make a life-altering decision from hearing something one time. Amen. 
I know you heard God call that guy's voice in your head and you thought God was telling you that that's going to be your husband. <laughs> Did he say it again? <laughs> You're making a mistake and an error. God will repeat himself to you. And I want to encourage you to consider and tell and listen now to God. Listen for the voice of God. Look at how he communicates and what he says to you. He will not have a problem repeating to you what he said when he wants you to do something. He called Samuel three times. Four times, actually. He don't have a problem repeating to you over and over and over again. He will do that. Amen. But now the question is, let me, let me, I'm almost finished here. I'm coming to a close. I'm bringing my plane in for a landing. I cannot take my time. I cannot. <laughs> I got to be out of here in just a few moments, but I'm trying to, trying to drive a point home. If you don't hear and remember anything else I say today, I want you to be aware. This is the thing I want you to do. Be aware. Has I, has, has I pastored this church for 34 years? How do I know what to preach on Sunday? Sometimes people come up to me and say, Pastor, that message was just for me. I felt like you weren't talking to nobody but me. And, and they, sometimes people, people have said, people have come and said, say, I know you've been talking to my cousin who told you about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, baby, it wasn't nobody done talked to me about you. The Lord talked to me about you. The Lord told me what to minister to you and it falls right in line with what I'm saying and I didn't know it was for you. I just knew it was for the church and if God made everybody else sit through the sermon just for a message for you, it shows how hard-headed you are and how, how he got to make everybody else sit through the whole sermon because you don't hear it no other way. Amen. Amen. So no, that's how God communicates with me. He tells me and he affirms it. And he'll tell me in the, in the course of a week or two weeks time, I'll see him speaking it to me multiple times. And that's why I can come up here boldly and courageously and confidently and preach to you what I'm saying because God has told me what he wants me to say. And he told me to tell you that he wants you to know that when you keep hearing something over and over again, it's him trying to talk to your hard head. He has called you to get saved over and over again, but you keep resisting. You keep saying, I got to wait till I get this right. I got to wait till I do this right. I got to wait till I stop this. I got to wait till I change this. No, when God speaks to you, say, speak, Lord. I'm listening. I'm going to do what you say. I feel a shout down in my soul. I'm almost finished. I'm, a, I'm coming to a close. I'm bringing my plane into a landing. I'm pulling my boat into the dock. I'm pulling the car into the garage. I'm putting the dishes in the dishwasher. I'm putting the clothes in the dryer. I'm bringing it in. Some of you today, God's been telling you, join First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. But you waiting on your husband, you waiting on your wife, you waiting on your mama, you waiting on your daddy. There's some things you don't wait on anybody else to do. When God speaks, you respond to God speaking. Where you at? Get on down here. This is what God been waiting on you. Just get on up and come on down here right now and say, you know what? I need to be a member of the church. I need to get saved. I need to rededicate myself. I need to get right. Just get on up and come on down here right now. We're going to shout and celebrate. Give God the glory. Amen. And the angels are going to dance and we're going to give God a praise. Come and say yes to Jesus who died on the cross for your sins. That's right, come on, amen. That's right, come on, come. Y'all encourage them while they're coming. They're coming.
Give the Lord a shout for all these lives here today. All right, amen. They're still coming. Encourage them, y'all. Encourage when people make that choice. We're encouraging them. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, man. I'm all right. So come. And they're still coming. So come. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm so proud of you. Best decision you've ever made in all of your life is following Jesus and joining the First Baptist Church of Glenarden. Some of you are coming to join. Or maybe you, you already, you know, you already say, but you don't have a church. This would be the perfect time to come to. You're already walking with Jesus, but you don't have a church home. This here is a great church for you to be a part of. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you to a room, sit down, and minister. They're going to minister to you. They're going to help you get in the right place with God. Father, thank you for each one of these that have come. They have responded to your voice. I pray that you fill them with your spirit, Father, that you change and transform their lives. In Jesus' name, let them have faith towards you and a heart of repentance and plant them in your vineyard. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise Him.